Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, according to scripture, there are three principal ways that helps come to the believer. God sends help through these channels. And I'll talk about just one of them, but I'll list all three for you. Number one, the first way God helps men is through his mercy. The mercy of God is one of the scriptural ways that men obtain help from God. I wish we had time we would have done a teaching on the mercy of God. It is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of the Lord that helps by showing mercy. Hmm. When God shows a man mercy it opens that man the, the, the remember when Jesus was passing Jericho the Bible says there was a man there called blind Bartimaeus. He had been blind from birth and he did not know so much. But the one thing he understood, he shouted it with all his heart. Thou son of David, he never said heal me. He said have mercy on me. He said it the more and he attracted the attention of Jesus and he received his sight. Thou son of David, have mercy on me thou son of david have mercy on me i don't know so much about you i don't even know your name but the one thing i know is that you are a merciful god do you know that the mercy of god was such a formula that the nation of israel they were taught that when they were surrounded by their enemies and defeat was imminent they would shield their swords and began and begin to sing you are good and your mercies and it was not a song it was a formula in the spirit that every time all options fail begin to invoke the mercy of god that was what happened in the days of jehoshaphat you are good and your mercies endure forever god's mercy is so powerful that it was connected to time it is renewed every morning it's in your bible is that true hmm. the mercy of god the mercy of god most believers think that the subject of mercy is only within the jurisdiction of sinners no granting pardon is just one dimension of mercy are we together now yes i will have mercy upon whom i will have mercy on and i will have compassion on whom i will have compassion on when you find a man who has attracted the mercy of God upon his life. In fact, did you know that favor only comes when it finds mercy already there? If mercy does not find favor there, I mean, if favor does not find mercy there, it will not go. It is mercy that attracts favor to come. Is it not in your Bible? Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Not because Zion needed mercy, the time to favor her but mercy must first precede yea the set time is come when he arises to favor you he first shows you mercy 
it is even the mercy of God that sponsors encounters. He says, below the cherubims, above the mercy seat, there I will meet with you and I will come in with you face to face. Hmm. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that are hearts always hunger oh our hearts always hunger the mercy of god is mysteriously powerful when a believer receives the mercy of god you know um, respectfully speaking i will tell you as i look at my life and look at the things that god has done and then that which he does in the life of others beyond grace beyond achievement all i see is his mercy happy is the man that has found mercy before god your life becomes a mystery a living epistle you will know it becomes clear are we together now yes this is an orientation you must have tonight that for your destiny to ever be actualized if you must rise to a place where your life becomes an effulgence of god's glory you cannot ignore the help of god and that the first way god helps men is by showing them mercy someone say mercy, mercy. say it with understanding mercy. the call for mercy is not for weak people the call for mercy is for wise people men who understand that outside of the assistance of heaven there is a limitation we have a system of advantage programmed in our work with god the first of them is the mercy of god number two very quickly for sake of time how does god show men help the second way that the lord helps men to rise and to accelerate is through the gift of men the second way god helps men is through men please do not forget this teaching men men strategic relationships i did teach you i think it was yesterday or this morning that there are three kinds of relationships general relationships seasonal relationships covenant or destiny relationships and I told you that when God wants to help a man, God will bring destiny helpers to your life. Men ordained, please listen, men commissioned and mandated to support your rising. They are not people who freelance into your life. They may not even know they were called, but they were ordained by God. That was the mistake that was the predicament the real problem of the man at bethesda was not his limitation it was the absence of help through the ministry of men mercy was already there by the the pool but the second level of help was not there and so he was even in it just one push into the pool and he remained there for 38 years mercy abundant but the absence of men when jesus came and said what is your problem he said my problem is there is mercy but i have no man i have no man meaning everyone who enjoyed that mercy was supported by the ministry of men jesus is on his way to golgotha as prophecy said would be and the bible tells us that he was so weak from the bleeding that has had come from his body he collapsed on the way jesus your jesus did not have the strength by himself even though the word of god now in the flesh now he had become the embodiment of sin he did not have the strength to go down to golgotha with the cross and he collapsed there i hope you realize that if jesus died on the ground he could not save your sin because it is written cursed is he that hangeth on the tree that the blessings of abraham might come upon the gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith that's what the bible teaches so if jesus fell on the ground he would just be an innocent man who was victimized till he died the entire purpose of his death will be robbed if you did not hang upon a tree 
but there was help a man was brought to him called simon of cyrene and that man helped him you would think because he was god he said i no. as god he did not need help but when he became a man he needed a man please listen very carefully you are as powerful as the men that god puts around your life to support your journey to greatness i have told you if god says yes and in this world of men men say no your yes remains in the realm of the spirit all blessings come from god through men to men all destructions come from satan through men to men in any case men are the prophetic midwives that can help people to actualize destiny or otherwise are you understanding me the bible talks about a very strange man in the bible called mephibosheth have you heard of that man the man did not commit any crime his only mistake no not a mistake his predicament was because of the carelessness of a midwife that was it and he became crippled for the rest of his life the woman sent to help the safe delivery for whatever reason she made a mistake the bible notes her mistake the mistake of a midwife crippled a man with the potential for a great destiny for life the mistake of a midwife someone say man it's important for you to know how god answers your prayer the moment you pray and ask God, start looking around. Men are like trays in the spirit. They come with a buffet of possibilities. You need to have that discernment. Men are so powerful. The psalmist was contemplating this and he said, what is man? I would quote it this way. What is in man? Lord, what did you hide in man that even man is not aware of? Men are a compendium of possibilities. When you see them come, God hides his anointing in men. He hides his wisdom in men. Did your Bible not say there is this treasure, but that it is hidden in earthen vessels? Do not forget this teaching, that when God wants to help a man to rise to the place of destiny, number one, he grants you access to his mercy. Number two, gift of men. Are you ready for number three? The third way that God helps men is by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is called the helper. And I just want to talk for a few minutes here and then we'll wrap up. Dr. Andy just began to discuss that so intelligently and powerfully. I was so blessed in my spirit. I said, he, he's already begun the discussion. The Holy Spirit. The Bible calls him the helper. The helper. He's many things, but my, my interest as far as this discussion tonight is concerned is the Holy Spirit as helper. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Corinth. And here's what he said. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Is that your Bible? I already explained to you that the word sufficiency means the ability to to have capacity always rising to the occasion never disappointing he's saying when you see us always meeting up standards it's not because we have an intrinsic ability as such he says our sufficiency is of god that means the the factor in our lives that seem to make us invincible is our partnership our partnership with god the bible says next verse verse 6 it says who have made us able ministers able ministers able ministers hallelujah jesus began to talk about the holy spirit in fact before i get there in ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 apostle paul is teaching the disciples and then when he's done with all his discussion now theologically speaking it is believed that the book of ephesians contains about the most balanced exegesis of the entire believer's journey are we together because paul intelligently 
diligently and towards the believers in Ephesus from verse 1 and 2 he reveals to them their position on account of the finished work of Christ then he helps them to understand the dynamics of walking worthy of their call then he teaches them how to stand against the wiles of the enemy are we together now now when we get to verse 6 he says finally in conclusion haven't taught you all the other matters of the kingdom he said my brethren be strong in the lord be strong in the lord and in the power of his might please give us amplified if we can find that very quickly amplified says draw your strength from your union with him finally brethren it says in conclusion be strong in the lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might provides be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord hallelujah praise the name of the lord so romans chapter 8 and verse 26 let me take it from where um pastor Edos, while he was teaching here he said likewise that means similarly as in the the pretext before this in that same vein the spirit helpeth do you see the word there the spirit helpeth our infirmity the word infirmity there is not the word sickness it's not related to sickness in this context at all the word infirmity there is bodily limitation the limitation that come to us by reason of wearing a mortal body he's saying unassisted by there are limitations for instance we know in part and we prophesy in part it's a limitation hallelujah but the bible says the spirit helpeth our infirmity that the holy spirit can provide a leverage an advantage to the believer and the bible calls it help how does the holy spirit help the believer can i run through the list very quickly number one the holy spirit according to scripture helps the believer by revealing the mind or will of god to the believer it is important you know this in this kingdom the will of god is very important you only succeed to the degree to which your life gravitates towards the will lord in fact the assignment the jurisdiction of the power of god the administration of the power of god is to bring all things into the will of god did you know that the assignment of the anointing is to bring every anomaly in your life into the will of god so for the anointing to work it has to vet what dimension of your life is inconsistent with the will of god and then it exerts a force an energy that brings your life to the will of god the end point of the manifestation of the power of god is that you walk entire in the will of god if you understand that say amen in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae. Please give us that scripture. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Here's what he says. For this cause also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, he says, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Is that in your Bible? It was the desire of Paul that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will lo i come in the volume of the book he says to do your will jesus found from scripture where it was written concerning him the bible says it was given him the scroll of Isaiah, luke chapter 4 and he stood up for to read and he began to chant the messianic prophecy and he closed the book and said this day is this scripture fulfilled they fastened their eyes on him and he began to walk wonders and miracles someone say the will of god one more time say the will of god hallelujah this is very very powerful in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 still speaking about the will of god the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared to install or has in store for them that love him but hallelujah but under normal circumstances it is too deep too high too vast but 
next verse verse um, 10 now please go to verse 10 go to verse 10 but God had revealed them to us how by his spirit because the Holy Spirit has the unique advantage of searching all things including the deep things of God that means the Holy Spirit is able to search the mind of the Father and to reveal to you the blueprints per time per season is a risk to assume a path and believe that that was the path he marked for you because the Bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it says but the end thereof are the ways of destruction the Holy Spirit reveals the will of God we had a little tour of your beautiful facility after the service and I listened to pastor as he shared you know I like to hear the stories of men how this came about and the summary of everything was the the mastery of hearing God and dr. Andy taught us again very powerfully walking in the will of God provided you are in the will of God there is immunity when you walk in the will of God you are at risk when you are outside the will of God the jealousy of God is mandated to defend you within the jurisdiction of his will do you understand this the will of God it is the assignment of the Holy Spirit in partnership with the Word God to make known to the believer the will of God the will of God the will of God number two the Holy Spirit helps the believer by providing direction and guidance direction and guidance this is very powerful John chapter 16 reading from 12 and 13 John 16 12 and 13 Jesus said I have many things I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now do you know the many things he had to tell them those were the things that were revealed by Paul imagine the gospel without the epistles we would never even there was no mention of our position in Christ the implication of the realities of redemption the gospel is the foundation for our understanding but the Pauline epistle gives us clarity and perspective it was Paul that began to help the believer understand giving us a sound exegesis of the the implication of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus to the believer it was Paul who mentored us to understand the dynamics of walking in the spirit it was him who arranged methodically the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer the assignment of Paul was to be used by the Spirit to bring the many things Jesus wanted to tell them but they could not bear because the Holy Spirit was not in them are we together now I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now I love the next verse how be it when he the Spirit of truth is come my Bible says he shall guide you into all truth say all truth not some truth all truth very instructive statement here just because you are around truth does not mean it will bless you you must be guided because the devil can use truth to destroy I hope you know truth is like a knife it depends on how you use it when Satan came to tempt Jesus temptation two and three was based on it is written. it is written shall keep his changes charge over you they shall bear thee up on their way lest you dash your feet against a stone it is written hallelujah the Holy Spirit guides you in all truth remember in Acts chapter 16 if you are Bible students the Bible talks about a damsel who was prophesying accurately all it under the spirit of divination and that by that prophecy she brought great gains so if you were following the correctness or the accuracy of the speech she got it right these were holy men of God but it was by the influence of divination it's a familiar spirit when the spirit of truth is come he will guide he will guide you many things that look right he will still guide you he will activate your organs 
of interacting with the realm of the spirit so that for a reason you cannot explain a proposal can be all excellent but you will still be constrained to go for it and you do not even know why the guidance of the spirit leading you through the paths of life and your destiny will continue to spell excellence in ways that even you cannot explain because you have submitted to the guidance of the holy spirit let me tell you what it means to guide and to direct they are not the same thing to direct means to show you the path that leads to your destination. To guide means to show you the steps that leads to your destination. So if I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, I will say, go, there is a door there. If I see well, there is another door there. Go and turn left. That is direction, not guidance. If I'm guiding you, I will let you know that there is a depression here. You may fall even though looking at the right direction so the assignment of guidance is to play the understanding for the steps to take while direction forces on the destination guidance focuses on the process and the holy spirit both directs and guides is someone learning most of us have opened up our spirits to be directed but not to be guided so we say, I know what God has said, that by the end of this year, this is what I will become. But do you understand the dynamics of your daily walk that eventually leads you to that prophecy? The Holy Spirit provides guidance. Holy Spirit provides guidance. The Holy Spirit provides guidance. The Holy Spirit guides. Number three. How does the Holy Spirit help men? The ministry of empowerment. It is exclusively within the office of the Spirit to empower the giver. Now, there are two dimensions of grace that the Bible teaches. The first is called saving grace. The grace of God that bringeth men to salvation. Are we together? Has appeared unto all men. That dimension of grace appears to all men and you do not grow in that dimension of grace because the assignment is to sponsor administering the life of god to you and once that happens it's exhausted its validity in your life the second level of grace is called enabling grace philippians 4 13 i can do all things that is a very very arrogant statement how does a man stand to say i can do all things do you know how many things there are to be done in your lifetime and yet he says i can do all things but he says through christ through christ that strengthens me through christ that strengthens me there is an enabling grace thrice paul besought the lord over the thorn in his flesh and god's reply to him was my grace is sufficient are we together so you do the doing but the empowerment comes from the spirit extraordinary manifestations by the power of the holy spirit how does a man use the jawbone of a donkey and would single-handedly slay three thousand philistines he did the fighting but the empowerment was of the spirit is someone learning now so the holy spirit empowers us he brings us into maturity he helps us by the spirit to walk in power supernatural power power is so important that the bible is not silent as to the fact that believers need to be empowered jesus for three and a half years had mentored the disciples and transferred sufficient knowledge but he still told them tarry until ye be endued with power from on high when jesus resurrected he called the disciples to continue the final phase of his lectures before his ascension to heaven hallelujah and when he began to teach them in acts to one because you see their idea was that jesus was going to come and restore the nation of israel as we know that happened in the 1940s historically they thought that that would happen within that time that was why they were negotiating posi political positions for themselves they left fishing not because they wanted to go to heaven or they wanted to be apostles they were hoping that by walking with jesus they would earn a very comfortable position when he's finally done with caesar 
and all of these people now jesus told them he was going that was why they were angry going to where to leave us you cause trouble we are, we are enemies we don't have families again you are not it was not compassion they were not missing he were angry we left everything to do and now you cause chaos all around rome and you said you're going peter said you're not going anywhere you're not going that was why when they came to catch jesus and he gave himself they were disappointed they expect him to shake them off walk through them and he gave himself peter ran away when jesus died he was disappointed managing his disappointment in john 21 he said i go a fishing and the disciples said we go with you it's in your bible <laughs> i go off in let me go back and do what i was doing for three years before this man deceived me i hope you know peter had a wife he had responsibilities so jesus comes to them in john 21 and peter in his frustration ah listen there are times where everything is right but minus god you will still fail look at peter at sea remember he returned back in anger to fish the boat was there the skill was there the net was there the sea was there even the fish was there but he could not catch it there are times that every parameter is right your skill is there the boat is there the net is there the experience the fish he was looking for was there but he could not catch it here comes jesus little children have you any catch and he looked not knowing it was jesus he said cast your net to the right side this is jesus now and the bible says when he casted the net they could not leave the net because he was about to break and peter was washing himself he realized it was jesus and he said depart from me for i'm a sinner and jesus said no that's not the issue come simon but jonah lovest thou me more than this he said feed my lamb and then the discussion continued peter was so broken by that encounter the same peter when the holy ghost came in acts chapter 2 they thought that these men were drunk now there was no time to run away he said calm down let me preach this is that that prophet joel said and from joel to david he began the same man who was running away confused but when power came upon him by the ministry of the holy spirit are we together now when he began to speak he rounded up his psalm by saying let it be known to you that this same jesus whom you have crucified has now been exalted as lord and christ the effect the bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do it says repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive of this promise for the promise is unto you your children your children's children as many as are far off even those that the lord will call three thousand people came and the ministry the same peter the bible says handkerchiefs and aprons look at this guy the, the shadow of peter all the extraordinary manifestations by the spirit weak men become strong when they are with the holy ghost you see let me tell you the truth jesus said the holy ghost is with you and shall be in you it's important you understand and dr andy explained it so powerfully union and partnership are we together now yes that union is a state it's a spiritual reality when you are in christ but your partnership requires the active participation of your will continually and consistently it takes partnership with him to change your thoughts and like pastor taught us there are three indices according to scripture that describe the maturity of the believer you find that in first corinthians 13 and verse 11 when i was a child he said i spoke like a child i understood like a child i thought like a child he says but now that i am a man i lay aside these childish things childish speaking childish thinking childish understanding hallelujah praise the name of the lord then he begins to guide you then he empowers you ladies and gentlemen let me tell you sincerely when the holy spirit comes in and upon a believer even in his power your life becomes a sign and a wonder 
that you embrace the help of God. Elevation Church today is beyond the testimony of an intelligent man, even, that, even though that is true. It's beyond the testimony of a great man who has endured so much. That is true. But I can tell you, all that you see that you celebrate and you are part of right in this place and globally speaking is a testament that when the Holy Ghost holds the hand of a man, incredible things happen. Let me give you one story. I'm not very good in sharing my stories for whatever reason, but let me share one and then we'll pray. Are you ready to hear? Story, story. Now, once upon a time, listen very carefully. No, 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 no. That's... <laughs> Hallelujah. So one day, I had a vision. And this was the vision that has become the bedrock of what God is doing today. In that vision, I was in a room. It was an elevated, like a story building. And I ran into that room because of fear. In that vision, there were a people who were looking for me. As though to destroy me and I was in that room and all of a sudden through the window I looked out and I saw an endless sea of people it was a whole generation crying and then they began to zoom to me and I was talking with the people the, the ones who were in front and they were crying and I heard what they said no food and no water and I said who is the cause I was so grieved in my spirit and they unanimously pointed to me i said no i can't be that wicked i can't be that heartless and then i made up my mind i said i will come down and do whatever it is within my power to help you but i remembered in that vision how frail i was i took the step of faith and i opened the door here's where i'm going as soon as i opened the door there was this giant gray bearded man who stretched his giant hands and said give me your hands and my small tiny hands held his hand and we began to walk together we were jumping from building to building there was a ladder I couldn't jump so he would jump and smile at me while I'm walking on the ladder to connect to him I didn't know that was the Holy Spirit it was a revelation of the excellency that can emanate from the life of an ordinary man when you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Spirit is not um, for preachers or those in the fivefold. They are just the ones who are most conscious of his ministry. That is why it seems that he seems to find greater or the greatest expression with them. As I'm speaking to you now, I just sense that there is an anointing, there is a glory. The Holy Spirit is searching for men and saying, would you give me a chance to make a wonder and a sign out of your life? Look what he's done to men in scripture. Ordinary men who walked with the Holy Ghost, they became powerful men. Are we talking of women? The Bible archives them in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, and Barak. Even though it was true faith but it was by the spirit because it is not by might it is not by power it is by the spirit mary the young virgin a young lady who was happy like any other lady preparing for her marriage with joseph all of a sudden she receives a strange salutation one morning gabriel comes to her and gives her a disturbing salutation Blessed are you among women, you are highly favored. And she wondered what kind of salutation this was. Then he tells her that she's going to be with child, however, without the assistance of a man. And she asks a very, very profound question. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? How shall these things be? How shall it be that I will build a business in six months without certain people, without belonging to certain groups? How shall it be that from a family that does not seem to have any pedigree of honor, how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man? I'm about to give you an answer that you will give men when they say, how did this happen? How did it happen that Saul became Paul? How did it happen that this ordinary lady how did Esther suddenly become queen? How did this happen? 
Kapata, Kaprate Kepalaka to Saprate Kepatia. How shall it be? How will these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. Watch this. Gabriel's answer is my message tonight. The angel answered and said, The Holy Ghost, Luke 1 34 35. Ah, the, the angel answered, Thank God that you are a virgin. Thank God that you are a wonderful lady. But this kind of possibility is beyond the scope of your preparation. It is the Holy Ghost. How shall it be that an ordinary preacher would lay hands on another and bring someone out of a wheelchair? How shall it be that you speak to nations and program a spiritual climate of possibilities over people? How shall it be that you say, let it be, and it will be? The centurion said, I know you. You are a man under authority. There is the influence of the spirit upon you. Please help that lady. It says, I said to one, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he comes. Speak the word only, he said. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.